They don't even bother to tell us 600 watts per channel at 40% distortion. How disappointing. Not to name any names here. So I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this. You either have kids at home or you had kids at home. I have three kids and two of them at daycare and one at elementary school. And it seems like about once every three months, they combine forces to bring home some sort of super cold. So if my voice sounds a little bit off today, that's all I've got going on. The RSL 10S Sub was my first introduction to RSL products. I've heard the stories about the original RSL 10S Speedwoofer, the value, the almost continuous recommendations for it if you're shopping under $500. I did eventually get the Speedwoofer 10S Mark II in, and yeah, it actually did live up to the expectation that was set. It's something that RSL seemingly does really well. They don't overhype their products. If anything, they tend to understate how capable and competitive they are at their price point. Today, we're going to review this little guy, the CG3M Bookshelf speaker, as well as see what kind of system we can put together for under $1,000 with primarily RSL products. This is not a large speaker. I consider the ELAC BS41 a tiny speaker, and even that is substantially bigger than this one. And while it's pretty obvious where we're going to see a compromise on this, at least it's intentional. No replacement for displacement when it comes to producing low bass frequencies. And while this 4-inch driver isn't going to produce a lot of bass, it was probably never intended to. The frequency response on this speaker is 90 to 20,000 hertz. This is without a doubt a sub-required speaker for myself, and from what I understand, it's probably what they intended as well. That 90 hertz is going to pair well once we get into building out the system later today, but I'll leave that one for a little later. If you could, please like and subscribe so I can continue on with balloon animal college as well as bring you more content i have new gear vintage gear diy all kinds of things coming so i'd really appreciate your support okay back to the review the other specs for today will be a one inch silk dome tweeter 86.5 db sensitivity a well-constructed crossover and compression guide technology basically compression guide technology creates an area of expansion contraction behind the woofer that allows more tuning for things like vent velocity and desired output According to RSL, this should reduce cabinet resonance and allow for tighter and cleaner bass at all frequencies. The last part likely comes into play a lot more with subs, as this isn't exactly going to be punching you in the chest with bass anytime soon. The role of this speaker is pretty simple. It's either going to be used in a two-channel system paired with a sub or as an affordable home theater setup. It's kind of unlikely, I hope anyways, that you're going to bring this into your space with expectations of giant sound or full range. In my opinion, these do great either at your desk with this compact size, or like I mentioned earlier, as a simple home theater. I'm pretty sure they have some discounted bundles on their site that'll cover both of these scenarios as well. So you already know there won't be a lot to talk about in that base region, but it's still worth mentioning that although these won't have a lot of impact below 90 Hertz, they still do a fantastic job right up until that point. I would almost assume that they did this on purpose as blending them into a sub was nearly seamless. A well-integrated sub, in this case their Speedwood for 10S Mark II, brought back that full range sound I prefer. The sensitivity on this speaker also cues us in on the intentional early roll-off. When I compare something like this RSL to the ELAC BS41, also using a 4-inch woofer, the ELAC blows it out of the water in the bass region, but it comes at a cost. I have to turn the amp up a lot further to reach the same volume. I would guess to say the RSL didn't want to go this route, as it also introduces some other problems on the BS41. For example, the mid-range and treble is definitely muddied by the bass-boosted ELAC, versus the CG3M that doesn't sound nearly as veiled, much more precision and detail in my opinion. The mid-range and treble on these feel very balanced. It's a great clarity speaker that can bring out the detail when it's called upon. Vocals are balanced very well, and there's an accurate realism to them. I can see why these are pushed very often for home theater use. On to the fit and finish on these. They come in a little over 200 a pair, so the expectation isn't going to be a real wood veneer or anything along those lines. They went with a matte black finish. It seems durable enough, at least in the time that I've had it. The grill won't be magnetic, so this one will have the pegs and the holes in the enclosure. It's not the cleanest presentation, but it's not really a big deal either. A unique feature in here is that these do come with the wall mount attached to them. You notice there's a port located also in the front, so that won't cause any troubles with the rear boundary. I almost had to say it's just a standard box, but they snuck in an extra cut in there just to give you a small but nonetheless detail to the front of these. The cabinets feel pretty inert. They certainly pass the overly scientific knock test anyways. If anything, I can say I'm getting substantially less energy than some of the other bookshelf speakers I have laying around. And this might easily be explained by their waveguide design. You end up with a bit more bracing inside. 
So if I wanted to put together a simple two-channel system for either a desktop or a small to medium-sized room, I could easily do it with RSL offerings. First, let's bring in a pair of CG3M speakers. Those come in at 105 each. Then we obviously need something to drive these. And if you're unaware, RSL also has a desktop size class D amp called the IA255.1. And it has a particular feature that matches right up with these speakers. This one has a selectable 90 Hertz high pass filter and likely no coincidence that the CG3M is a 90 Hertz and above speaker. This obviously does have a sub output as well. That's where the 0.1 comes from. Not the standard RCA like I prefer. You'll need a 3.5 adapter for the connection. The amp also has tone controls and puts out 55 watts per channel. They don't even bother to tell us 600 watts per channel at 40% distortion. How disappointing. Not to name any names here. They also have a switch to go between the USB DAC, Bluetooth, and the line in. And this is where I'm going to stray from RSL for just a moment. If you're not connecting to your PC, I'm going to suggest that you bring in a Weem streamer at this point. Big surprise, right? It only makes sense though to open you up to all the connections as well as the EQ options since they now even offer a parametric EQ. Okay, so at this point we're at 210 for the speakers. 110 for the amp, and let's say 89 for the Wii Mini. You're only at 409 here. If you have a decent sub to pair with this combo, you're good to go. And if not, just get the Speedwoofer 10S Mark II. It's likely the best you're gonna get for under 500. It's 400 watts, 1020 peak into a 10 inch woofer using the same compression guide technology that gets us down to 22 Hertz in the sub. It comes in at 449 and brings the total to 858. That's not bad considering many of the other offerings on the market. At your desk or in a small to medium sized room, this is gonna hit hard and easily overpower a space. The speakers are small, but the crossover at 90 is gonna allow them to be pushed much further than a small speaker attempting to cover a much larger frequency range. I've reviewed both of RSL subs, the 10S Mark II and the 12S previously, as well as their integrated amp. So if you're interested in either of those, check those out in some of my previous videos. A lot of RSL in this video, but just to be clear, I don't have any type of affiliate relationship with them. I just wanna highlight some of the value in many of the direct-to-consumer brands out there. A lot more money can go into the product when you take the big box store out of it. Well, at least that's the theory, right? Not all of them are going to put it back into the product to deliver more, but the ones that do, I will gladly give a shout out. Companies like RSL, Bucart, and Emotiva come to mind right away when I think direct to consumer. Okay, so wrapping up the CG3M portion, comparables that I have personally reviewed would be the Sony SSCS5, but these are totally different sounds. The Sony will have more bass, but also falls apart if the volume gets loud. It's a good speaker for the price, no doubt, but it's also voiced completely different. It's forward, it can even be bright with some pairings, versus the RSL is gonna be much more of a neutral sound. It also won't be as susceptible to falling apart at the louder volumes with its tuning. The next easy comparable that I've already mentioned today is the ELAC BS41. Once again, totally different tuning here, but in the opposite direction. The ELAC BS41 is very bass boosted, and you may like it, especially if you're planning to go without a sub, but just know it's very much so a bass boosted speaker that won't shine details. It's fun nonetheless, but I would be a lot less likely to use it if I had a sub in play. I just wouldn't have the need for that type of sound, and it won't perform as well in home theater settings either. The RSL CG3M has its compromises as well, but I feel like these were a bit more intentional. The roll off at 90 is the main one that comes to mind, and it's basically begging you to pick up one of their subs. End of the day, you just need to know what you're looking for, what size of space, what amplifier, Will I be including a sub? Picking out a speaker is rarely cut and dry, and realistically, you won't find one that does everything perfectly, especially at the budget price points. So just try to shop smart. Wrapping this one up, the CG3M is an easy to recommend speaker, as long as you know your intentions with it. Just the other day, I actually suggested their 5.1 setup of these speakers to a friend, so I think that should say enough. Please consider liking and subscribing, as I have a lot more content on the way. Something should be for everyone, really. We have new gear, vintage, DIY, balloon animals, Probably not the last one. Take care. I'll talk to you soon.